Hello everyone and welcome back to Reentry, an orbital simulator, an early access game in which you are the astronaut in a Mercury, Gemini, or Apollo spacecraft and you get to flick all the switches and conduct the missions. And I have previously done the Mercury and Gemini lessons and I am on to the Apollo lessons now. I haven't really done the missions, they have actual missions. I'm still in the academy but I'm uh, going through and so these have uh, historic missions for instance and I'm still going through the academy trying to learn all of the spacecraft first before proceeding on to the missions and I am starting on Apollo. I actually started on the Apollo lessons during a live stream uh, but uh, that recording turned out to be a little bit too choppy to present to YouTube and I also wanted to add one other feature uh, or at least try something out that I haven't tried out before with this game and that is face track no IR. So you might have heard of track IR which tracks your head movements and uh, allows you to uh, control your view in a virtual cockpit like that. Uh, but face track no IR is just a piece of software that uses a webcam and does the same thing. The interesting thing is that anything that is compatible with Track IR is also compatible with Face Track No IR because they both use the free Track API. So I have enabled Track IR here, but I am just using my webcam, uh, so no fancy $100 equipment, uh, just trying to use Face Track No IR. And I'm gonna see how that works. This is the first game I'm uh, seriously trying it out with. I've cal calibrated the thing already, uh, at least. Um, I mean, of course, there'll need to be some fine tuning, as there would be for track IR as well. It's never perfect. And of course, lighting conditions in a room affect both of them just the same way. So anyway, uh, we will see how well that works. So Project Apollo lessons, and I'm going to start over with the lessons I had previously done. And that's also because I wanted to get more used to it. There's a lot of buttons and flick switches in the Apollo command module. So let us proceed. Okay, well, that's a little bit further zoomed in than I want. Okay, well, actually, the zoom out on the mouse still works. That's good. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes with track IR, they, it, it completely overrides the mouse. Uh, well, I mean, I can't turn with the mouse. You can see I'm trying to turn with the mouse. That's not doable. Uh, okay, I can look over there. I can look over here. I can lean forward, I can lean back, that's good. Okay, maybe a little bit too sensitive on the wobbliness. I'm gonna tune that a little bit. And really roll, I don't need much of it at all. Okay, maybe that's alright. So, welcome to Apollo, Launch Complex 39 here at Cape Canaveral. This is in a very early development and is subject to many changes. You can imagine how complicated Apollo is going to be. So, most systems are in early implementation stages. And again, the game is in early access, just remember. You're now sitting inside the Apollo Block 2 command module, thankfully. We're not all, well, we'll talk about Apollo 1 later. Uh, it is attached to a service module where most of the major life support equipment is installed. The Apollo Command and Service Module, CSM Combo, is the primary Apollo spacecraft sitting on top of a 111 meter high rocket named the Saturn V, uh, which is currently being prepared for launch. Uh, CSM is highly sophisticated with both manual and automatic systems that are designed to take you safely to the moon and back. Okay. Hold down the mouse wheel button. Well, I'm, I'm using track IR, so, or face track, no IR. Uh, the primary source of power are three fuel cells with batteries installed as backup. Okay. Command module can host three astronauts. This is oscillating a little bit. Uh, that I'm wiggling. Uh, each with a primary duty. In this simulator, you assume control of all systems. The left seat is commander seat, and that's F5. So we can better situate ourselves here. We'll see. This is as far as I can zoom out. Uh, okay, that's doable right there. Okay. Yep. Attitude controls, early monitoring, and sequencer control. Middle seat, F6. Which might be a good place to get some of the switches. I don't know if it doesn't wiggle too much. Uh, 
Okay, computer environmental control and attitude controls. More attitude controls. We've got the computer between the commander and the pilot. Right seat is the lunar module pilot position, and that's electrical systems, radio control, and SPS engine configuration panel. Illuminated with both floodlights and fluorescent controlled from left side of the seat, panel 8, and right side of the seat, panel 5. That's all right. Uh, okay, yeah, we've got panel numbers. So if I look up, you can sort of see panel number 1 is all of this stuff. All of that stuff. And over here, that's panel number 9. And then down there, I think that's panel 8 down there. Okay. Oh, well, the joystick is sort of... needs to be centered. Hold on. There we go. Alright. Sometimes when you have your throttle up on the joystick, it actually controls the menus and possibly other things. Okay. Mission pad, checklists. Okay, and Roger. Boost preparations checklist. Uh, interestingly, pre-flight is just check all the panels, so no need for that. Daunting, but it's really quick. It wasn't really quick. I actually ran out of time during the uh, during our Twitch attempt at this. Assume you don't touch anything on any of the panels unless you really know what you're doing. That's a faulty assumption right there. <laughs> um, Almost every switch is functional and will configure a system. First thing we need to do is run program 1 on Apollo Guidance computer. So let's go to the computer. That's the IMU alignment you can see here. That's running program 1. Operated by verbs and nouns. Okay, well. Let me get as good a view as I can here. Okay, um, you go off to the side. Verb. Yes. And we need to use verb 3, 7, so it's got to tell me 3 and 7. Okay, I, I, I clicked enter already. Alright. And it knows I need a noun next, so 0, 1, enter. And I, I should, I feel like I should just click run there, but. Okay. Okay, it's now showing program... Well, it already showed program 1 and now it's on program 2. So, we've moved on already. Okay, yeah, it'll sh uh, run program 2 automatically. And that'll align the inertial systems. And it'll eventually run program 11 to launch. Uh, program 11 is critical for boost. So, if it doesn't start, we have to do this manually. And... Um, yeah, we're going to use verb 75, enter, and that will prepare that uh, program 11, just in case we need that. There's really way too much bouncing. Okay, very hard to press anything on the console during launch as vibrations are on the extreme levels. I had personal experience with that during the live stream, where I actually continued through the uh, checklist during launch, uh, yes, it was very hard to hit buttons. Okay. We will not press enter to prepare uh, the program 11. And then we'll only press enter if program 11 doesn't start. First thing we need to do is distribute electricity among the 16 RCS thrusters. Okay. Yeah. RCS switches over here and they allow us to connect the RCS to either main bus A or main bus B. They, they all are in the right position right now so I'm just gonna jump through this. Okay, check battery C. Battery C is important and is used for many of the important electrical systems during failures. Rotate the DC selection knob on MDC3. Okay, well that's probably on the LEM side, uh, lunar module pilot side. Yeah. 
electrical systems generally are. And so we want to go to battery C and check that the DC volts is 37. Rotate the DC selector knob to main bus A. And we see that that has 29-ish. Hmm, okay, then the FDAI is used to see attitude, error, and rates based on a stable platform. The one on MDC1 should now display a pitch of 90, yaw of 0, and roll of 90 plus. And if we take a look at this attitude indicator, um, it's certainly showing a 90 pitch that it's got. The roll does not appear to be, well, 90 plus, maybe it's a 90 plus. Yaw, maybe. I mean, it's just the roll is throwing me off there, because it's definitely a non-90 roll, but maybe 90 plus is, it qualifies for. Okay, so, we need to set the scale to 5.5. Five. That's the error and rate. Right now it's on 5.1. And that will enable some maneuvering systems so that they can be used in an abort. Okay, the rate is high. Allow faster angular rate instead of the fine movements we need for like docking and such. Enable the translation stick by giving it power. And we want to set the power to either main bus A or main bus B instead of just main bus A on that one. And same here. Otherwise we can set them just to one of the buses. And then this command module computer mode is free. Oh, no, no, that, that, oh, I didn't mean to click that. Well, now that's ruined everything. <laughs> okay, this to rate 1. This to rate 1. And this to rate 1. Okay. Astro launch operations voice check. Right, so we go to the LEM seat over here. Oop. Come on. See, now this is a complicated place. If you're just flying in flight sim, using face track is no problem because you don't have to reach weird switches all over the place. This one is giving the tracking a little bit of trouble. Okay, managed to flick it. So, S band switch is off. And we have to go to the commander's seat and switch that switch to off. And then test a radio check. Okay, they read us, fine. Yeah, I did that. Okay, now we have to flick both switches to off. Since I'm already here, I'm gonna flick it here first. All right. Do another radio check. Yep. Okay. So that's done. Sure that the service propulsion system engine is set to off. Nope. Oh, back to the commander's seat. By first verifying that the SPS thrust switch is set to normal. Well, let's see. Um. That's this one. SPS thrust is set to normal instead of direct on. And then the two delta V thrust switches are off. I suppose that's the off position. I don't dare flick it to see. And then one I had trouble finding is this uh, APC. And that's because it's alpha PC actually here. And we need it to be set to alpha. So that's that one right there. Uh, but it's actually really hard to see what it's set to. Okay. Yeah, it's set to alpha. Alright. Check EDS auto, two engine out and LV rates. That's MDC2. So that's... Uh, we might as well just go to the pilot seat for that. 
they decided to stop highlighting things. I seem to recall finding these fine before. Oh, there they are. EADS, uh, EDS Auto, yes. Um, two engine out, yes. And LV rate is also on auto. Yep, okay. TVC servo power one. Well, I'm gonna try and see if the checklist can run through it. We're running out of time again. Uh, let's progress through right, these. Uh, I've done all that. Two, I've done all that. Do not enter. RCS command down. Okay, well, fine. RCS command down. TVC one's up. Now, let's see if it lights it up so that I can actually find it. Oh, down there. Jeez, I would have never found that yet. Okay, managed to get there somehow. Okay. Set the fuel cell reaction valve to latch. That's not down there. That should be over... yeah. Uh, let me... Uh, there we go. So that's for the high vibration during launch. Secondary coolant pump is off. That's over there. Commander seat. Oh no. It wants me to verb. Well, I guess the secondary coolant pump is already off then. Yeah, uh, because the switches are centered, those are off. Okay. Uh, so. Yes, it's this one of these. It's one of these. All right, fine. Uh, we are running a little bit behind. Commander seat. The engine lights have come on. They'll turn off once the engine's light. Uh, program two is running. Yep. Now, verb seven five. Verb but don't antibody. press enter. Got it. Okay, I saw the primary glycol. To read or handle bypass not yet implemented okay fine whatever not yet implemented is fine set the main bus tie AC switch to on well it's a pretty already well no uh, we haven't gotten to that yet this wants me to do this uh, tape spool so let's just go through that while we still can and that's up uh, now it wants the primary glycol radiator thing and that's over there. Um, right click. And then main bus tie AC to. Uh, 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 come on. Come on. Head tracking. Let me. Okay. Okay. Two pad comm switches, that's what we're on right now. So, where are they? And Okay, commander seat. Off. Pilot, uh, lem seat. Off. Okay. Um, commander seat. <laughs> Gotta be late again. Okay, GDC alignment. Okay, well, we did that. Hopefully that'll get us to the right attitude. I don't know, it still lit that. I'll press it again. Okay, now it's happy. Okay, mission accomplished. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, wait, 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 11, wait, wait. 10, uh, 9. We're not doing that yet. We're not doing that yet. We will do that as part of the next lesson. Reduce Apollo launch camera shake. Oh, that's that's during launch. That's probably a good idea, actually. It was pretty serious, and I've already got another wiggling going on, so okay. 
Okay, welcome back into the command module cockpit and academy lesson 2. This time we will test the checklist and what I learned in lesson 1 before igniting those powerful F1 engines. Okay, many systems involved. Yep, many of steps are automatic unless something malfunctions. Give us those malfunctions. Uh, hi, Apollo rocket. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just gotta talk about the Apollo rocket. Hopefully you know about it already. I'll talk about it as necessary during the launch. Okay, let's let's do the whole boost prep thing. So we'll run it like this. So verb three seven enter one. Tony Laden clear. Uh that that was two. Uh reset. I said oh one. Enter. Okay, DC indicator. So back to the lem seat. Yeah, that's this one. And we're checking battery C. And that is fine. Yes, progress. And then back to main bus A. And that's the usual twenty-eight to twenty-nine. Okay. So, back to the commander seat, we have this stuff, and, well, the nav ball looks about like what it used to look like, so, that, 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 so that we have good control, and this one is up, this one is, oh, that's up too, sorry. Um, this is free, and this is down. Down, down. Okay, and then we do the radio checks. Okay, that down, and commander seat, that middle. Okay, then radio check, radio check. Yes, good. And then progress, and then we can flick that back. Yep, 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 yep that back up and then go back to the lem seat and then flick that back up and then perform another radio check okay all right all that stuff is already done and then we can oop, flick that no no flick that down okay better at the pilot seat i think all right, TVC servo. Oh, that's that tough one. Okay, commander seat. Okay, those are done. And then reacts valves. That was. Uh. Oh, there it is. Okay, and then we're already prepared to do verb 75 and then not press enter. Wait, did that was that fun? No, that was wrong. I think I'm pressing five sometimes. Wait, I I that's not you no know, verb seven five. There we go. All right. And then this is spool up. And primary glycol to radiators is that switch there, which you right click. All right. Main bus tie is over on the lunar module seat, I think. Yeah. This one's tough sometimes. It's too sensitive when I trim my head this way. Okay. Uh, radio 1. Well, uh, I'll just do it in order. Okay, and then finally, commander seat. GDC align. Push. All right, we're all set. 
we can time warp to the launch. See, that was quick. Alright, uh, CMP on panel 2, just you verify program 2. Program 2. Yep, right, we're on uh, program 2. CMP on panel 2, just three, 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 insert verb 75 and do not enter. Verb yep. 75, standing by. We've got verb 75 ready. All is well. Getting some additional dead zones to limit the wobble here. I think that's tolerable. It was definitely wobbling too much before. The problem is when I turn, it's no longer in the dead zone, so then it starts wobbling more. It's only when I'm facing directly forward that the dead zone exists. This is obviously a problem, well, not a problem, but it's uh, something I have to tweak in face track no IR. It has nothing to do with the game, really. This would be true in any game. The API is the same. Okay, to miss launch, program 2 should now be running. Well, yes, it's been running for quite a while. Uh, and we're running, waiting for the umbilical disconnect signal. And the ignition will start, well, the process will start at T minus 9 seconds. And get rid of the communication panel. The engine will start to build up thrust, and once thrust is nominal, the lights will go out. And then eventually the inboard lights will uh, turn on again when the inboard engine cuts out. That's to limit hey, G-forces on that stage. And then the S2. One minute to launch. Yes. Three immediate things you need to check. Okay. The engine lights are extinguished. Yeah, when that happens and that the computer switches to program 11. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Well, Let's it's a little bit late. We have I noticed that during the live stream. But eventually it switched to uh, program 11 and the lights went out. But it was just a little bit late for my tastes. Okay, and the lapse time is up there. Mission timer. Yes, it has started. And liftoff is indicated here by that light. Well, I guess it's that light, but it's been on the whole time. Liftoff light. This liftoff light where the eight glass covered push buttons are. I thought these were the glass covered push buttons, but I don't see the Step liftoff light. for one Bravo. Mark, one Bravo. It says top Mark left one. Oh, I think I, I, I just. Oh, I'm, I'm leaning down. Uh, okay, that's not a good way to look at things. Uh, above the no auto abort is a liftoff light. You're good at one minute. Yeah, everything is fine. Pitch program is happening. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mark, mode one, Charlie. Pretty consistently Eight, five, rolling at uh, yeah. right up, 45 go. degree angle, I guess. This is Houston, you are go for staging. Okay. Set propellant dump on MDC2 to RCS command. I don't know what that does. We but confirm it work out. Confirm it work. I think I accidentally put that wrong, so I don't know for sure. Okay, the cam pressure should be decreasing. Yes. And where do we see that? We see that over here. Uh, this is the pressure and the cabin pressure is that right one right there. Staging. Okay, we had staging. I didn't actually see the center cut engine cut out. Okay, and then we have five good engines on the stage. And we are at nearly 
nearly three right, minutes. The launch escape system should separate at any time now. So I actually, okay, the tower is gone. I actually had to ask. I didn't know for sure what these numbers were, but basically the top number is our velocity in feet per second out of all things. Uh, the next number is our climb rate, uh, and, and this decimal point, invisible decimal point, unfortunately. So it's actually 286 point, whatever the last digit is, feet per second. And then the last number down here is our altitude in nautical miles. So 83.5 nautical miles, 84.4 nautical miles. So I had asked that before it showed me this here, but this didn't tell me the units either. Uh, it would confuse me because I didn't see a decimal point. We passed max Q a lot, and we need to flick this to off for some reason. And the engine out to, to off, okay. LV rates to off, those are important things. Inboard engine cutoff will be soon. Oh, uh, I guess that's the first stage staging. It's a little bit behind where we are right now. Oh yeah, we have an alternate clock over here. Yes, tower just happened. Okay, now we have to switch that alpha thingamajig to PC. I have to keep going. No, no, that's, that's down. This to rate demand. Okay, abort mode two has started. Okay, and we're actually pitching down just a little bit right now. This, I mean, if I was launching a Saturn V in Kerbal Space Program, this would be a little bit early for me to be pitching down. So the first stage really overdid it. Um, I've seen the numbers on the first stage for Saturn V, and it actually. It goes much more horizontal, and it should be overshooting like this. The second stage should maintain, I mean, I believe, should maintain a pitch up for much longer. Well, now it's returning to a pitch up, so I guess it's okay. But it shouldn't have pitched down in the first place. That's a uh, teensy bit inefficient. Not critical, but inefficient. Mark, Mark, S4B to COI capability. Okay, so now our third stage to get us into orbit, just in case something should happen. Uh, four gimbal motor switches to start. And start is top. Uh, oh, uh, because they're, they're uh, starting an engine, you know, you just flick it and it returns to its original position. So that's fine. It doesn't stay in the start position. So we're at 99.1 nautical miles. It has pitched up to what I would expect it to go to. We expect the second stage to go out at around 8 minutes and 30, 8 minutes 40 seconds. trip to orbit. It's a long trip to orbit with the Saturn V. Atlas took about five minutes. Titan, not too much more than that, maybe six minutes. The shuttle took about eight minutes. And, no, I'm not including the OMS bird, that is a little bit later. The main bird is eight minutes. And uh, Saturn V can take like maybe 10, 11 minutes. We've got inboard cutoff. Roger, we confirm, confirming the Lord now. Mark, mark, mode four capability. Okay, and so now our service propulsion system could get us to orbit if the third stage was completely useless, like Cut it didn't off. ignite at all. Okay, so that's the ignition of the third stage. As expected, around eight minutes, 40 seconds. And we're holding at around 100 nautical miles there. And you know,
us were uh, we were actually going down. Now it's pitched up again so that we can go up. Still in program 11. Okay, we have inserted into Earth parking orbit. Roger, shut down. Okay, and then we need Flight to Friday, we write down the data from, from those registers, so I'll open the pad, down, notes. Um, so, I don't know why we have to write them down, but okay, so um, I'll just say R1 is 25570, R2 is 18 again that's our vertical rate right now and r3 101.3 really uh, actually instead of 18 I'll put the decimal place in okay Roger okay and then we have to press key release to clear all that it means it wants to display data when it flashes that it wants to display some other data so now it's displaying other data and what's the other data? The orbital parameters. The guidance vehicle is still in early development. And as with the real rocket, the achieved orbit can be different. Okay, we have to check whether the orbit's not dangerous. It looks okay. The first number is the... Let me clear this off. First number is the apoapsis, which is 103.1 nautical miles. That's more than 200 uh, kilometers and the periapsis is 97.4 nautical miles and that's also about 200 kilometers so it's pretty safe orbit for our transfer to the moon and the last number it says is displaying the time of free fall to 49.4 uh, nautical miles which is basically the edge of space 100 kilometers um, and so that's a fair amount of time if that's in seconds I don't know how it calculates that because we probably shouldn't free fall to 49.4 nautical miles at all, but whatever. Um, if the orbit is safe, you can key the uh, program uh, zero, 00. But let me just quickly check the checklist on here. Insertion. Let's just run this because we, we have insertion. I don't know, maybe I'll key that in too, but the insertion checklist should include this command too. And I feel like we should do all these things first. Okay, uh, Okay. TVC servo. That's thrust vector control. Just trying to get down there. Okay. All right. Lem. Main bus tie down. BC down. Pyro arm. Yes. Well, only the commander can do pyros, surely. And that's open. Okay, direct ullage, main bus A. Well, that's important for restarting the S4B, I think. Ooh, that's a weird place. What? Okay. I think that's... Well, that's a lot. PL vent FLTPL. Well, okay. That's not... That is over here. Okay, basically we have to flish, flip all the switches down here, apparently. Okay, and that's off. This is down. 
down. So they're not both. Uh, they're on not on both buses. They're each isolated. And we're setting things to different rates. Uh, we want finer control instead of the coarser control we had before, I suppose. Okay, I think that should be on the left side. Uh, or not. Ah, pallets. Okay, RCS heaters on. CW mode up. Is it? Oh, it's down there, right? Yeah. H2 purge line heater. Okay. All right. Now I'll tell it to do this. I'm sure it's irritated by the fact that I didn't let it go already. Come on. Okay, for 37 and 00. zero. So that's the program change and that's program 00. zero. Okay, well, I did the insertion checklist already. Alright, back to main menu. And I think that took quite a while actually. There's a lot of flicking. Uh, so that's how launch works with Apollo, I guess. Uh, you turn a lot of stuff on for the launch and then uh, change it to finer controls, uh, you know, disable abort stuff, and um, yeah, and basically turn off a whole lot of stuff in orbit. One thing we note that's different from the earlier ones is squibs, no squib things. Basically, that stuff is, I guess, automated, or they already set to the right position at the start. Uh, but I didn't see those switches. There's a lot of elect electrical controls that we didn't really see. But we'll go over the electric system next time, the RCS and the computer. Hopefully, I think those three can be done in the video. Uh, and then these three. Uh, docking, that's an interesting thing. This is where the command module turns around and docks to the, the lunar module. That might be a separate thing should be interesting anyway so look forward to apollo systems in the next re-entry video and with this i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time